Thanksgiving. We are in our kitchen getting started a little late and we're actually having dinner or lunch at 1.30. But if we're a little late, that's okay too. Um, we got a lot of stuff pre-made. We have already mixed up our dressing. Chris did that for me yesterday. If you watch the Bible study, you know I had a really bad fibro day yesterday. So I had to rest after I cooked the green beans. I made the cornbread and um, I boiled the eggs and that's all I got done. So Chris came in and he mixed up this dressing. And so what I did is I put the lid on it in the pot and slid the pot in the refrigerator. Um, we've got green beans already made back here. I haven't stirred them yet, but they've cooked and we'll just let them sizzle a little bit. I'm gonna make cream potatoes in this, <coughs> sweet potatoes in this. We're gonna make some mac and cheese, some deviled eggs, uh, a banana pudding, and we have a chocolate pie. And then we have rolls that we bought, all right? So we're gonna get started first with my deviled eggs, and as soon as we're done with those, we're gonna hop over here, pour up our dressing, and then we're going to start some mac and cheese. We're gonna be doing a lot of stuff. So I hope you're ready to relax, have a cup of coffee, and join us in the kitchen with Collard Valley Cooks. For our Thanksgiving feast, this is for our kids today. Um, I've got a bunch of eggs because they love eggs. And I actually got out my bagel knife. That's a Raider knife because I thought it would make a nice little groove in the egg. It would be pretty. It did okay. Now, I made these eggs yesterday, so they are going to have a dark sulfur uh, realm in them. Doesn't bother me a bit. Uh, because I was sick yesterday and I didn't feel good. So I boiled them and I let them sit for a little while. And that's why they have the sulfur ring. If I had gotten them out quick and cut them up, it wouldn't look like that. I don't want to cut my hand. These knives are sharp. So I'll lay down the egg every time. Let's just slice them all right quick. We're going to mix it up, put it in a piping bag real quick. I had these in the same pot last night. I just... Left everything in the pot. So these were in this pot. My dressing was in one. And my green beans were in one. And so I didn't like put them in something. I just put them in the refrigerator. That's the way I like to cook. Yep, we got a lot of stuff done beforehand. And still a lot of stuff to do today. But easy stuff today. Mm-hmm. All right. So now we're just going to pop out these real quick. They're not popping out as easy as I wanted them to. Because they're cold. Yeah, and they got, you know, they got stuck in there because I didn't get them out early. Mm -hmm. So I guess I will have to scrape them a little bit. You want it like a spoon or something? Or no, this is perfect. Okay. It's kind of got a round edge on it. Yeah. So... We'll do it, y'all. We got the table all set up. This is the only holiday that we set the table for. The rest of the time, it's uh, Christmas time, it's snack time. Um, we never sit at our table, hardly ever, but we do for Easter Sunday meal, and we do for Mother's Day, and we do for uh, Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And if you have any kind of general well, I just threw that one questions about any recipe, you can look on the website, and it has every recipe. Printable. It, and it's printable. So some of you are asking questions about certain, you know. So you can look any of those up. They're all there for you. I made it for y'all's Christmas present this year. Mm -hmm. Me and Chris worked for days mm -hmm. getting all of those recipes printable on the website. And so, I wanted you guys to be able to go in and print one um, because a lot of you are having a hard time figuring out how to get it off the description post. My recipes have always been available, but some people just had a hard time figuring out how to get them. <coughs> I don't know why, but I'm coughing this morning. And I just dropped an egg in the floor. Uh-oh. I know. Got a lost egg. No way. 
The whole egg. That's why you know. have to make sure you make extra. Yep. Y'all tell us what you're cooking for Thanksgiving. Or when your Thanksgiving is. Some people aren't getting together today. Don't get together this weekend. Mm -hmm. Where they already had it. Some people. Oh, yeah. All right. So, we're going to put this in the sink. One of them broke, so I'm not going to use it. You can tell they're not the prettiest things right now, but they're going to be when I get done with them. All right. So, I'm not going to... I'm not, I don't have my recipe on the page because I... I chose to put the recipe on my recipe stand. You can see it right here. These are my recipe books. They're made so that you see one recipe at a time. They're large prints. You can see them across the table. Um, this is my old-fashioned mac and cheese, my banana pudding, and we'll be making it in a minute. But I know this one by heart. We're just going to throw it together. All right, so I like to use mustard mayonnaise. Um, I use some of the pickle juice. I personally like sweet pickles. Um, if you like dill, then you just use the dill. The vinegar's already in the pickle juice, but you can add a little if you desire. I don't double dip with any of my spoons, so I get out different spoons for each thing. And this mustard is cheap. I got it at Dollar Tree, so it's really thin, so I had to be really careful when I squeeze it because I get more than I bargain for if I'm not careful. Now, I have made these deviled eggs with paprika. I like to sprinkle the tops with paprika. And I have made them with um, smoked paprika, but Chris likes them better with just regular paprika. So this year, we're just using the regular paprika. I just use a fork, and I mix it up really good. Now, some people put it in the mixer, but I don't go to that much trouble. And But I do go to the trouble of piping it because I think it's pretty, especially for special occasions. Now, if you're just making it on a weeknight to go with dinner, I, I wouldn't. But for days like today, I always do. I like to buy the pickle relish instead of salad cubes because it goes through my piping bag easier. My mama always used salad cubes in most everything, but I buy relish. And mainly just because it's easier to pot. And I like it. I like it because it's cut smaller. And I just, I like it better. Some things I do a little different than mama did. And this is, uh, it's the same recipe. It's delicious. Stuff. Now, you don't need salt because there's salt in the mayonnaise, okay? And you can add a little black pepper if you want to. Um, I usually do, but I'm not now because I already mixed it up and threw my fork in the sink. So now we're going to put in a tip. This tip number is Wilton. i got to look at it. I'm getting old, y'all. Good Lord. One... M. One M. Number one mama. Mm -hmm. That's how you remember it. Yeah. Number one mama tip. One M. Wilton. So we're going to get this in our popping bag. You know what? I have decorated cakes my whole life, and it took me years to figure out. I'm not kidding. That when I finished with a bag that's a pre-made bag like this to, to flip it wrong side out to try to wash it. I used to try to wash the inside of it. Yeah. And now I flip it up, up backwards. Yeah, you're always learning stuff. It took stuff. me years to learn that, you know? Always learning stuff. All right, so here we go. We're going to pop them. This may not have been the right tip. I always grab the wrong tip when I'm... I may have supposed to have grabbed my bigger tip on the end. So, whenever your tip's not big enough, you can take something that's flat and kind of open it up a little bit. So the pickles will go through. Whoops. See, now it's working better. Mm-hmm. 
And our daughters are coming, and they I think they have a couple of friends with them, or at least one. Let's see. I like to take, I, I like to use at least one egg extra for I ha, so I have a little extra. In other words, I don't, I don't, I usually leave one of the whites out and use the yellow for one. And y'all, I'm going to do this because it's Thanksgiving and this is what mama does. This is cooking like mama did. Chris will have a fit, but I'm going to do it anyway. So when I get finished with my egg, because there's some left in the bottom, this is what I do. Don't want to waste any. I don't waste it. I eat it. Isn't that terrible? I'm so bad. Terrible. When you're cooking for Thanksgiving, you got to clean as you go. Now our eggs are done. Next step is going to be pouring up our dressing. We're going to sprinkle these with a little paprika, and I'm going to wipe the plate off underneath them so that it's not so wet. Before I sprinkle them. And when you sprinkle them, you kind of got to be a little bit careful so that you don't Get paprika everywhere. Yeah, the eggs were in water in the refrigerator. Yeah, when I put them in the fridge, I cover them with water. And I put a lid on it. I like to keep boiled eggs in a quart jar with water in it. If I boil them ahead of time to eat them for breakfast, and it keeps the refrigerator from smelling up. Right, Daddy? Yep. I don't smell anything. Paprika going on. Now, some people like to use pepper, but I didn't grow up eating hot eggs. I grew up eating sweet eggs. Some people put, somebody sent me a message yesterday and said she put crab meat in hers and it was delicious. Mm -hmm. I bet that would be good. Because it's sweet. Yeah. Some people use jalapenos instead of pickles. They have jalapeno eggs, which would be good, too. Let's well, see how fast that was. It's all good. Eggs done. Okay. And we're eating in a couple of hours, so I'm just going to sit this right here. It's not going to hurt anything. They were really cold when I made them, so it's fine. Now, hopefully I haven't burnt my dressing over here. Now, if you warm your dressing up on the stove... You gotta watch it really close because it's got milk on, in it. I'm gonna turn it up just a second and we're gonna stir it. But you gotta be super careful if you do this. And preferably if you got a nonstick pan, do it in a nonstick pan. But Chris mixed this up yesterday. I'm not gonna warm it all the way up because I don't have time and I don't want to burn it. So, we're going to pour it up. I'm going to go ahead and spray this. And this is my mama's dressing, not my granny's, but my mama's. The one that's 150 year old dressing is my granny's with old biscuits. This one uses bread. This is our very favorite. Mama's. And Chris cut up the celery yesterday and the onion already um, had the cornbread done. Now, it's not going to look as wet when it's cold, but it's a very thick pan, so it's going to take it a good two hours. And when you make your dressing, make sure it's going to crack like cornbread. When, you, when it's baking and it's going to start cracking around the edge, make sure it cracks all the way across the middle. If it don't crack in the middle, it's not done. It takes it a long time. We're going to go ahead and slide it in the oven. Okay? And anybody that's ate Thanksgiving dinner anywhere has had dressing that was not done. <laughs> it's just... I know. Isn't that the truth? It, it is one of those things. A lot of people just have a hard time with it. Uh, I'm going to move this right down one. 
more than one thing to say. And I'm going to pull it kind of towards the front so it's not quite as hot in the back because it's going to be cooking so long. Okay? I got it on 350 right now. 350? You can cook it up at 400 if it's thinner. All right. Next up on our agenda is doing the mac and cheese. So I'm going to wash this pot because this is the only pot I have. I'll Maybe. show on the uh, chocolate pie while you're doing it. Okay. That'll be good. Okay. We'll have a chocolate pie. We'll have two desserts. We'll have chocolate pie and uh, banana pudding. That's going to be our two desserts. Here's chocolate pie made yesterday. That is a delish, delish chocolate pie. It's really fudgy, like a brownie almost, and really rich. There's Tammy. Yeah, it's like a brownie fudgy pie. It's on page 61, I think, in the first cookbook. And so um, we're going to get some water in here to start our pasta for our mac and cheese. And while we're doing this uh, and getting this water hot, we are going to mix up some banana pudding. Hmm. I don't or, know why, but I'm coughing. It's really weird. It's because we don't have our allergy tablets. You think? Yep. We're out of our allergy tablets. We need to go to the store. We're probably going to be sounding pretty pitiful. Okay. Whenever I start water for pasta, I salt it. I never put oil in it. A lot of put it, people put a lot of butter in their mac and cheese, but it keeps the cheese from sticking to the pasta. So I don't put a lot of butter. Um... But anyway, all I'm going to put in this water is salt and put a lid on it so that it comes to a boil quick. My lid is in here and it was on the dressing, but it ain't dirty. So here it goes. I'm going to sit there and get that hot and we're going to come over here and start our banana pudding. But let me put this in the fridge while we're waiting. I typically buy Blue Plate, but I will buy Dukes. Um, so if you're wondering about my mayonnaise, I use Dukes and Blue Plates. Just according which one's on sale. All right, what was I about to do, Daddy? Make banana, banana pudding. pudding. So I need a batter bowl for banana pudding. For banana pudding, you use a half cup of sugar and a third cup of flour, and I whisk that together first. That's a third cup and a half cup. So we'll be using a half cup of sugar. I always use self-rising flour, but you don't have to. I just do because that's what I use the most. Third cup of self-rising flour. White lily. White lily. Throw in a dash of salt and whisk it up. Then you add the milk and the eggs. milk. There's two. That's about a quarter. And now I'm going to crack the eggs. We're going to keep the whites. And I like to use a 
at least four eggs so that I have enough whites to make a pretty meringue. Anytime I make meringue, I like to use at least four eggs. Yeah, if you're gonna make a meringue, you might as well make a meringue. I'm gonna put these in that milk and mix them up and then add them to the pudding. These are at room temperature, so they're not gonna crack quite as easy. I'll wipe this up when I'm done. This time of year, I keep out a few eggs all the time at room temperature for baking. some giblet gravy after a while. I usually make it at the last minute so it's nice and hot. Put that in there. Sit these over here to beat. Mop up our mess. And if you weren't on film, you could have your dishwasher open and just put everything in the dishwasher as you go. really really good now we're gonna put it in the microwave for three minutes on high make sure you get all of the flour off the bottom and while that's beat while this is cooking we're gonna start our meringue and our pudding so we've got three minutes over here in this I am going to place my meringue. There's one, a couple of large pieces of the uh, protein piece. And a lot of people wonder what that little white thing is. Come over here, Chris. Um, a lot of people, they have all kind of crazy ideas, but can I say that it's there to keep the eggs, the yellow in the middle of the shell. So there's there's some rumors out there of what it is, and can I say that's not what it is? I'm not gonna say what people think it is because it's not what it is. It's in all the eggs, whether there's a rooster or not, if that gives you any idea what I'm trying to say. And it's there to keep the yellow part of the egg doggone it in the middle of the shell. So it keeps the egg fresh. And it has a name, but I don't know, real fancy name. I call it the white thing. And anybody I, that has a question about a recipe, again, I'll point you to the website. CollarValleyCooks.com has every single one of these recipes or any other recipe you want in there. Yes, they're all printable on the website. Yep. All of our recipes them. are printable. Yeah. Just go to the website at www dot colloredvalleycooks.com click on print recipes yep. then there's categories pick the category you want a recipe out of there's over 600 recipes on our website printable all right i'm gonna put an extra egg white in here just because i think it needs it and we just do that i mean because everybody asks you know you just you might as well go ahead every time and about two or three times a video and tell people oh yeah but that's good because that okay here we go we're going to mix these up helps now better. once they start to um froth get frothy and stuff i'll start adding about a quarter cup of sugar to them what, what is that get it foreign object looks like the shell of a pecan <laughs> probably is That's a 
about to go over there. I'll turn that off for a second. It's really loud. You can see it's already starting to kind of get thick around the edge. See that? But you really have to get it out and whisk it again because if you don't, that flour will settle down in the bottom of the pudding and then your pudding will be lumpy. That's all you got to do is stir it good. Put it back in there for three more minutes. By the time it's done, this meringue will probably be done. Y'all just have to excuse the loud noise of the mixer. You're going to make a meringue, you got to make some noise. Yep. Some noise. Now, uh, when you're doing meringue, you're supposed to wait until the eggs get frothy before you start adding your sugar. I've learned a few things since I started the show. Um, if you look in here, they're frothy. So we can start adding the sugar. <laughs> Microwave just went off, if you guys couldn't hear that. I'll look at my little chicken right here and get me a cough drop. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. We've had this little chicken thing forever, and I keep... Come here, Shovel. I keep cough drops in one. Cupcake holders in one. Toothpicks and string. And the other. We have had it forever. We can't buy one. All right. Pudding's out. 
with banana pudding. You don't want it too thick. If it gets too thick, your pudding will be dry. This is about like I like it. Butter and vanilla. Mm-hmm. Where did I put my butter dish? Oh, it's right here. So I put your little butter in it? I'll use this. That had egg on it, though. Yeah, it did. Good catch. A little butter in it. A little vanilla in it. requirement banana pudding and chocolate pie they requested banana pudding which is on the press when it crisps mm -hmm. it's actually a little bit lumpy I eat it any day mine ain't ever lumpy I don't know what to do must have need to sip my wine all right here we go we're gonna spray the bottom of this just so it's easy to clean let me put it over here in this bowl. Got a box in the other wafers. And I'm not making a huge banana pudding today. Nor am I making, I gotta make banana pudding and I gotta make the mac and cheese. I was gonna put the mac and cheese in this. Let's put the banana pudding in this. Okay. You think we might all use this one? I, I don't know. We'll make it this size. I just won't overdo it. We had to go all over town. You didn't spray that. It's all right. Okay. We had to go all over town to find them vanilla wafers. I found the last box at, where was it? The Dollar General. Yep. <laughs> we went to three stores. Yeah. The second Dr. Dollar General we went to had them. So I put my pudding on the bottom, a layer of cookies. Now, if I'm making a really deep one, I just do one layer and don't fool with, you know, different layers. This is a fast one. Fast what? Banana pudding. Yes. Yeah, Not messing around. As long as you get it all in the bowl. That's the main thing. And I like my bananas really thin. Let me get that string off. After mm -hmm. Clean game to me. Your banana needs to be ripe. Not so ripe it's black, but ripe. Doesn't need to be green or it won't taste good. So, I like to get bananas that are yellow almost all the way to the top. These are a little bit on the green, tiny bit on the green side, but they're good. We've had them in here for three days, so... Spread them around. Good stuff. Really good stuff. You can always leave some in the bowl to taste. Yeah, just that pudding by itself is definitely good enough to eat. By the time we're done with this, my pasta's going to be done and I need to pour it up. Okay. It's timing out pretty good then, ain't it? Yeah. Make syrup that Okay. I'm just going to turn the heat off and that way it won't get too done. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, that's all the that's all of the pudding. Yes. So I'm gonna put bananas on it. Okay. And then do the wafers.
I didn't do the very end of this banana because it was black. Now, I do not like, personally, I like banana pudding the day of. To me, it's not near as good. Left over is something I don't make ahead of time. But I will eat it the next day. Chris will eat it, but I sure won't. Tammy won't. I'm picky. But it is better. It's better when it's warm. Just I'm going to use about another half and then we'll be ready. Not the strings. <laughs> oh, they just won't be in my pudding. Those strings are after you. Now, I like to save enough wafers for around the edge. I don't count them or nothing. I just do it. Cookies are good. And we wanted the name brand in the biscuit. That's why it took us forever. Get what we wanted. Yep. Here is our, yeah, I overbeated this. That's all right. If you overbeat your meringue, it's not quite as pretty. So I'm just kind of making it creamier looking. I stirred it up a little. I overbeat it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Oh, it'll be delicious. Yeah. It won't hurt nothing. That's for sure. And you want to seal the sides when you're spreading it out. Why do they want to do that to you? <laughs> I just thought you say that. <laughs> um, it helps keep it from. Makes it better. Drawing up. Oh like, yeah. It'll draw up and 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 move away from the edge yeah. if it's not got something to cling to. The meringue. Yeah. Got you. So. Your mama made little curls in it and make little curls in it. If she made swirls in it, then make swirls in it. My favorite tool to do, make it pretty with is um, this. I gotta hurry because my pasta's over here. I like to use this and make it if you like swirls. swirly. But now my mama did the up and down thing, like you know. But we all, let me just start over. All right. Now, let me check my pocket. It looks good. Looking good, y'all. Looking good. Now I just take the wafers. Might go around the edge. Make it pretty. Um, Bob, if you're watching today, you've been on my mind a lot. I hope you're doing better. Bob actually got me this red bakeware as a gift last year. And I sure am enjoying it for Christmas this year. I love the color of it because red goes with so many things. It's good to use for Christmas. It's good to use for Valentine's. It's good to use for Mother's Day. Fourth of July. You name it. Red just goes with it all. So if you want a good thing for your kitchen, get red. Get red. Alright, and then I take a couple of cookies always, and I crumbled them, and put 
pat them on the top. And if you want more meringue and it to be taller, then you just got to beat up more eggs. But you don't need any more eggs than that in your pudding. If you do a double batch of pudding and make a double, then you're going to have eight eggs, which would be a lot of meringue. All right, we're going to slide this into the oven with our dressing. And this is going to bake until it's golden brown. It's going to take it about 20 minutes. And now we're going to pour this up, and we're going to make our mac and cheese. And then we're going to sign off for the day. Because i got a mess to wash. And now all i got left to do is potatoes. That's so easy. Don't take them long to get done. So let me see what my recipe says for us to do. So a few cookies left to eat. Right here. Let me pick this up, y'all, and then we're going to start our mac and cheese. Let's see, and we're gonna have, I guess I can kind of go over this while you're, we got green beans, ready. We're gonna have sweet potatoes in there. Candy sweet potatoes. Yeah, candy gems, candy sweet potatoes. Uh, we are going to have regular mashed cream potatoes potato. or cream potatoes. We're gonna have deviled Turkey. eggs. We're gonna have- Turkey. Turkey. Ham. Ham. Giblet gravy. Giblet gravy. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Dressing. Like Dressing. And the dessert is banana pudding and chocolate pie. And we got rolls. Yeah, and we got some rolls. I didn't make them. Not homemade. Sarah Lee did. Yeah. I love Sarah Lee. Y'all know her. Put her in a saucepan, add salt and pepper, sift in the flour whisk until evenly. Half a cup of butter, quarter cup of flour, black pepper, four cups of milk. This is old fashioned mac. So you're gonna make a gravy. Today I think I'll just make it in this so it's easy to clean up. I'm gonna turn this on and put in a half a stick of butter. When you put your butter in this way in your mac and cheese and it's blended into the gravy that you make and your cheese sauce, then it doesn't separate from your pasta like it does if you just layer it in the dish. You want me on this side? Yeah. I want you yeah. to get going. So all I need is my sifter with a half cup of flour in it. And then you can stand there. Oh, that's cornmeal. Uh -oh. Woo! That was close. That would have been different. <laughs> Mac and cheese with cornmeal? I don't think so. Don't think so. We're going to need four cups of milk and four cups of cheese. Three cups in this and then a cup in the pan itself. So, let me get out uh, my milk. That's a lot of milk. I don't think I'm going to use the pot that much because we are um, not making as much mac and cheese. Yeah, you I may have to get out a bigger 
Two cups, probably. I used to leave. Mm. Mm. All right, we're going to salt and pepper this. Put in our flour. I may not need all this flour either. Let's see. Close enough. So you want to brown your flour some? You'll start smelling it. It'll smell really good. We'll be making gravy in a little while again for our giblet gravy. I may as well leave my sifter out. So just let that get a little bit brown. Let me turn this off. I'm live making some gravy, what you need. Hello? Hello? You want me to start stirring this? Are you coming? No, I'm coming. She didn't say nothing. All right, it's brown. We're going to add our milk. It'll take that second to get warm, so let me go see what she needs. My daughter. Cheese and I'm lying. Do you need meat for something? Were you speedy? So what did he say? What? What did you say? Let me call you back. Let's, yeah. We're almost done. All right. She got pulled over. She said she had on the cruise control. So I don't know. We'll have to see what's going on. Well, it may never usually speak. It's weird. All right. So, I even was going to text my kids this morning and say, do not speed. There's tons of cops out. Hmm. And she's gotten pulled over. She said she had on her cruise control. So I don't know what the deal is. Yes. It doesn't matter if it's too fast. She said. Hmm. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So you're going to put in about three cups. And this has got about, does it tell you? Two cups. So this is going to start getting thick. It's not quite there. It takes it a minute. And then once it starts to thicken, we're going to add the cheese. I'm going to go ahead and add the cheese. I think I heard it. So there's two cups. This is country medley. So it's just all different kinds. It's got check, cheddar jack and, uh, I mean cheddar and jack and just different things. Um, So this is how you're making a homemade cheese sauce. All right, watch out, baby. I'm moving them to the bar. They can see good. Stay where you are. On this side. No. Okay. For now. All right. You got to get this mixed in good, and we need to really add just a little bit more cheese to it. I'm gonna use the rest of the, I'm gonna use cheddar for the rest, for the top, and we're gonna add just a little bit to this.
fashion way to do it. But this one on. And then you put the cheddar on the top. Here it is. I'm going to use it all so I'm going to reach in it. this about once a year. <laughs> yeah, we are not Big Mac and cheese eaters. It's, it's way good. Good. Yep. It's really good. How long do you think that's been in there? Uh, probably 15, 15 minutes. minutes maybe. It's probably about ready. Yeah. The meringue. It's not quite round enough for my liking, but... What do you think? Pretty close. Yeah, leave it in there. I don't want the cookies to get too brown either. Yeah. They're kind of getting brown. It's it. I think I'm going to take it out. Okay. We're going to take this out. We're going to sign off and I'm going to call my kid and see what in the world is going on with her. Mm-hmm. Woo! When you got college kids, there's always something. Mm-hmm. Something's tore up or something needs to be fixed or they get tickets, they have wrecks. Amy got a ticket not too long ago, and I made her pay for it. That's not quite brown enough. Nope. I'm going to put it back in there, y'all. It's not quite brown mm -hmm. enough. It's really... The, the cookies are getting too brown because it's on the uh, hog. So I'm going to put it on the bottom. I'm going to turn this around. Put it down on the bottom so the cookies don't get too brown. Yeah, it takes a good 20 minutes, usually. But you got to cook that meringue. All right, y'all. So we've got mac and cheese. Uh, I'm done, except for potatoes. Mm -hmm. So, y'all have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving. And thanks so much for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook, like Mama did. Happy Thanksgiving. Love ya.